Good day all. I hope you can hear me because it's quite windy, but gosh, it's warm. It's about 55 Fahrenheit, which is funny because we had a few days of quite icy weather. Um, but then we had some warm rain, which took the rest of the snow away and uh, all the ice, obviously, if it's in the 50s. <laughs> um, and today, because of the moon and the cycles of the tide, we have the tidal flats. But the wind, gosh, the wind was so strong this morning. Uh, it was like a nor'easter, but it was blowing from the south, which is why we have warm weather. But it was just battering the house with rain so heavy. It felt quite nice watching the, uh, watching it with the, um, with the storm. In fact, I grabbed some footage, so maybe I'll slip that here. I didn't go out too far because I didn't want to get my camera wet, but the wind was just howling and the waves, the big white caps. And now, obviously, you can see that the tide is out so much that we can see the seabed in the harbor. But this morning, which I'll share with you now, was the heavy wa wind and waves pounding against the sea, and this rock here had big white, white caps pounding over the top of it. So you could see how, uh, how the weather was this morning compared to now. It was high tide and pounding wind and cold air, but now it's quite warm and every so often, just like just now, the wind stops. You can see it's trying to be a sunny day, but there's some mixed clouds. And the other day I was out here walking with ice everywhere, which actually I should probably share that video as well. I walked the beach and was looking at ice on the big boulder there. It's a chilly day to be sure. It was a balmy 7 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. I've just, I've been out to check on the chickens again and it's about 10 degrees Fahrenheit now. But there is promise of it getting beyond freezing today. So I'm going to walk down to the beach. This is when I really wish we had our stairway put in. I think I mentioned before the old stones that used to be a beautiful, a really beautiful stone stairway path made from these giant rough cut pieces of stone here were put in back in the 80s, but after Hurricane Bob, the tide was well above them onto the lawns and uh, scattered them everywhere. So one day I think what we can afford is some wooden steps. down by the big rock. It's cold enough that even though this is indeed sea salt water coming off the great rock here, you can see as it dripped down as the tide went out, it made seafaring icicles. And we have this lovely bit I love when the, uh, the uppermost ice freezes on the, uh, the tide and as it slips out, it floats up and gets caught on the old seagrass and cracks and looks like funny old crazy, crazy paving, but made by mother nature. You could almost picture it a garden path of crazy pavers. 
heading on down into a garden, which of course will soon, in six or so hours, be covered again by the cold, salty sea. gulls are happy to uh, be out. Earlier the geese were here. I wish I, I wasn't able to get out then, but the geese were out having a jolly old time walking out with all the creatures exposed. And of course they love to eat all of this here. Eat down on what seagrass is left. And you can see here we have exposed harbor floor. I know, gulls. You can still have your repast. So here, the spitting rock, which I've shown so many times, now we're down on its level. And here you can see all the uh, dead man, uh, drowned man's fingers hooked to the rock. In the summer, I keep a big aquarium full of things from the sea, and I change it out every couple of days to keep it fresh. But these are uh, uh, wonderful to put in there. I just keep them a couple days though because they aren't as happy if you leave them in there too long, even though I do have filtration. And I'll catch little fish, especially when it's like this in the summer, there'll be little fish caught in the little rivulets and the little um, tidal pools made from the receding tide. And I'll scoop a few of them up and put them in the aquarium for a few days and then set them free again. But not this time of the year, it's far too cold. Although, as I said, it's warm compared to this earlier in the week. You still know it's February in New England. There's some shellfish that made past the gulls' beaks hiding down there. Mm. Oh, that's delicious, but I'll put it back. In the summer, of course, we dig for these. And here, as you can see, we can walk right down to the very edge of the spitting rock. see the wind whipping up again, making that perfect blue-gray-green color I so love and I'm always trying to capture as it moves little mini white caps across the channel. And as we come around the back side of this bidding rock, look how immense it is. In the summer when I swim around it, I have to be careful if there's waves because all of these barnacles, you don't want to be pushed up against it. But it makes an amazing sound in here. basically my weekly weather report to all of you. And look, there's the flat rock. Doesn't it look immense? In the summer, I love to swim around and around the outside of it when the tide's high, because all those plants laying prostrate are of course up and full, and there's little shoals of fish and all sorts of little, um, different little living things to investigate with your goggles and snorkel. 
And of course, when the tide is right, Algernon Seagull and his chums fly up and drop their shellfish and crab breakfasts and luncheons on there. It's usually littered with the shells of their food. It's so nice to see the sandy seabed. And here I love that this is, see this little bit, because of the way the tide moves in and out, there's a little pool here. So if any fish were caught, they would be able to hopefully just make it to the edge of this little pool. And as I was saying, see that pile? And look at their footprints. Do you see this littered pile of shells down here? It almost looks like broken crockery. It's from all Algernon and his chums eating and dropping the rocks off the flat rock. Sometimes if I'm wearing my proper bathing suit, I can sit up here in the summer, but you don't want to wear a modern bare-legged bathing suit to sit on this because this is all barnacles and it would slice. And all along the outside edge, you can see all the broken shells and crab remnants of all the breakfasts, luncheons, and dinners, and candlelit suppers had here on the flat rock by the gulls and the cormorants and all their little footprints. Well, thank you for joining me for this week's video journal and weather report. And I thought I would end uh, last time I shared this sketch, a uh, pencil and watercolor sketch of the lady with a cat. And I had meant to give her a fan and call it Lady with a Fan. But in fact, I actually did finish the painting and here you will see it in oil. And I've actually called it Lady Pink because I decided to keep her just as is. And I wanted her to be a sort of character looking to try to find her cat, but being so used to court dress and large wigs and elaborate hats, she's completely unaware that her 20 pound cat sits upon her head as she looks intently for it, whilst the cat gives the evil eye to the footman saying, don't you dare tell her where I'm hiding. And so I give you my finished painting, Lady Pink. And if you like it, uh, it will be available for sale, and you can actually check it out on my blog uh, with the link at the end, but it's DonnaDavisArt.com. And thank you so much for joining me for this week's little journal, little postcard to all of you. And until next time, remember, stay creative. Cheers. <laughs>